What's up guys, welcome to another vlog. Today is gonna to be kind of short, but it should be pretty spectacular. So I am on my way up from Silver City, New Mexico, which is in Southwest New Mexico, driving up to near Taos, which is in Northern New Mexico, and I'm on a very time crunch. It is about six something in the morning, and this is happening. And I don't know how well you can see that, but we're at Emory Pass, which is 10,000 feet up, uh, driving through the Black Range to get to the freeway to go north and we have a massive cloud inversion and this is incredible i stop here every time so i'm gonna do uh i'm gonna grab a couple quick b-roll segments of that and some images some stills real quick and then i'm gonna get back on the road so sorry if this is gonna seem a little chaotic but like i said we got called in for a photo shoot yesterday for today six hours away so we're like we're in crazy mode right now, but uh, I don't care. You know, like we have, you have to stop for this. This is insane. Insane. I'm gonna use the drift method. Freaking incredible. Round F16 for that to get that sunburst. Man, I really want a time lapse of that. Really want a time lapse. But uh, I'm like an hour late, so I really gotta go. All right, let's get back to driving. I had to stop real quick. We're uh, almost to the mining ghost town of Kingston. No, we just passed Kingston, we're almost to Hillsboro. But this stuff is incredible and it is just everywhere. This cloud inversion where we were up looking at just a minute ago in Emory Pass, now we're getting down below into all that stuff. So let's keep driving. Well, we made it to the Taos area. We're about 20 miles south of Taos. We're running along the Rio Grande, which is down there. And uh, so the client, by the way, the client that I'm shooting for is a, a rafting company called Cocopelli Rafting, and they also do kayaking. And they got some new kayaks, and they're uh, gonna run a new section of the river that they want photographed because they don't have any photographs of the sections. And there's a lot of petroglyphs that people haven't really seen before. So they want to photograph uh, family adventure and petroglyphs and nature and all that stuff just to help their marketing purposes so that's what we're doing here so I, if you haven't noticed we will be kayaking as well so you might not see too much more of me from the vlog aspect but i will definitely do some b-roll because i will be shooting because i will be filming a commercial for them too so hopefully i get to put the drone up today because this area is absolutely amazing and it's surprisingly not windy so let's get ready Stop number one, we found some petroglyphs, so we're hiking up this little area to check them out. And the river is right there. It's cool. Oh, 
All right, sorry about the audio. The audio part of this is crappy because I'm on my cell phone because uh, I'm in a boat. So we're doing about eight, nine miles, I think, on the Rio Grande. And uh, we have to stop at three places for uh, petroglyphs that they want documented. So they want pictures to show of uh, where their guides take people and what you can expect to see if you sign up for this part of their their guides, uh, this part of their day trips. So uh, it's a rough job, but somebody's gotta do it. And I'm pretty sure I'm getting completely fried right now. Yeah, completely fried. It's worth it though. I live a rough life. So I've got the 1D strapped back there in that dry bag. And then uh, Brittany's got Brittany's got the 5D4 with the 1 to 400 for the zooms, and the tight shots. She's got that in her dry bag. And uh, I've got the wide stuff. I am doing a little bit of video on the 1D for a little commercial type deal. So tip if you ever do this, get good dry bags. And uh, don't forget your audio because audio is still super important out here and get a stabilized lens and uh, I'm about to hit some rapids so I'm gonna put this up and see you in a little bit. an abrupt change from the river so basically this is like three days later I'm back in Albuquerque I'm at my friend's house right now I didn't get a chance to finish up the episode so I'm gonna do that now and I want to give you guys a couple of tips for getting these type of clients and just talk about a little bit about how I get these type of clients also I should note that my friend has a lot of birds so if you hear any weird jungle sounds <laughs> that's coming from that way big big birds over there. Anyways, tips for getting adventure style clients like this. So the first and the most important thing uh, that I think aspiring photographers overlook or tend to overlook is that you need to figure out what type of clients you want to go after first. And then you need to do your research and look at their social media, look at their website, look at their videos, look at their images, whether you're doing pictures or whether you're doing video. You need to assess how they're using visuals. And then you need to look at the style of visuals and you need to figure out, can you shoot that? Whether it's, again, whether it's stills or whether it's videos. Is that something that you can do? If it is, the next thing you need to do is you need to look at your portfolio and you need to think about, is that kind of stuff in your portfolio? If it's not, you need to get it in your portfolio before you even try to step in front of anybody. Now the biggest thing that I get asked and the biggest thing that I see a lot of aspiring photographers saying is, hey, you know, I'd love to shoot for Jackson Kayak or Trek or Subaru or whatever, uh, but I don't know how to get in front of them. And first of all, that can take time. Uh, it doesn't just happen overnight. I didn't. I didn't just walk up to these guys and say, hey, I'd love to shoot for you. I've done that in the past, but every time I do do that, I make sure that I have a solid pitch ready and that I'm pitching to the right person. But when I work with Subaru or when I work with Trek or whatever, I, I make sure that I have something that they want and that they need and that I can fill what they're looking for when it comes to making the visuals that they're gonna need. So when it comes to adventure type stuff like this, like the kayaking, the mountain biking, the extreme sports, anything like that, and really any type of photography, if that's something that you love to do, 
then you need to go out and do it and you need to take a camera with you and you need to photograph the crap out of your friends and yourself and whoever you can find. If it's a local pro or something, get in front of them and ask them, hey, can I tag along with you? Can I give you a couple shots? Can I take a couple shots of you, whatever, and then use them for my portfolio? That's how I started to build this stuff. When I do the mountain biking stuff, I'm a mountain biker. So I went out there and I said, I got a group of my friends together and I said, hey, we're gonna go ride, but I'm gonna be shooting today. So, so that I can put that in my portfolio. Same thing with kayaking. I said, hey, we're gonna go kayaking today. And I got my friends together and I said, hey, let's go kayaking. And I'm gonna shoot you guys for some professional stuff for my portfolio. And these are just my friends. And then you build it up from there. So the next tip is kind of common sense, but it should be this stuff that you wanna shoot, if it's like this, if it's concerning extreme sports or whatever it is. And in my case, it's extreme sports. Although this round of kayaking was not that extreme. <laughs> but uh, whatever it is you wanna do, you need to make sure that you know how to do it. Not just that you know how to photograph it, but you that you know how to do it. These people, they hired me not only because they know that I know how to shoot kayaking, but they also know that I know how to kayak. And they also know on top of that, that I know how to shoot kayaking while I'm kayaking. And that's very important because the places we went today, I couldn't have done that any other way. I had to take this stuff with me and I had to know how to do that. And I had to be comfortable enough in my skills to get the job done on a professional level. And that's the same thing when I do the big mountain biking races. I have to, I know how to shoot mountain biking. I know how to mountain bike. And more importantly, I know how to shoot mountain biking while mountain biking. So when I go to those places, uh, I have to get to those parts of the races and whatnot on my mountain bike. There's no other way. I, I don't have time to hike in there on my feet. I gotta ride. So the same thing with rock climbing. When I go rock climbing, I have to rock climb and I have to know how to shoot rock climbing and I have to know how to shoot rock climbing while I'm rock climbing. So those examples are a bit more extreme, but that's just the kind of stuff that I do and that's the kind of stuff that I fell into um, but it goes for any type of photography that you want to do. If you want to shoot portraits, then you need to start shooting portraits and you need to have that in your portfolio. If you want to shoot weddings, if you want to shoot travel stuff, you don't necessarily need to travel to be a travel photographer. You just need to show even the local places to show that you know how to tell a story through your camera that someone else is gonna need in the travel industry. So those are just a couple of tips that I wanted to give you guys on how to get started in doing stuff like this if you're interested in shooting professionally in this type of photography and this type of uh, adventure activities. So make sure you find the people that you're interested in. You go follow them on social media. You comment on their stuff. When you feel like you've got a solid portfolio and a good idea for something, then maybe start by approaching them through their social media. That's, to me, that's been a real great way to get a hold of companies because someone from their marketing department is running their social media, that's their job. So they're gonna be more likely to know who to talk to or they may even be the person to talk to when it comes to you approaching them. And maybe just send them a DM with a picture and a, a short, concise, that's also key, concise pitch to say, hey, I've got an idea, here's an image I did, I would love to talk with you about working with you. And then, you know, your name, email, whatever, give them a better way to contact you. If they get back to you, if they get back to you, then you're going somewhere. If they don't get back to you, try again in a couple weeks or try a different social media platform or whatever. Don't just email their company at info at whatever.com because chances are that's just gonna get thrown out the window. And most importantly, don't give up. I've found that, you know, I do this stuff for fun. This was all the stuff that I loved to do, that I still love to do, and I do it for fun. And the more I do it, the better I'm at it personally, but the more chances I have to shoot it professionally, even though it may be a personal project. And then the more chances I have of stuff organically happening, like companies eventually approaching me saying, hey, we saw this thing you did, or you tagged us or whatever, and we really loved it. Would you love to talk some more about whatever they need. So that's really important. This does not happen overnight. I've been doing this for the better part of a decade and I've been doing it for well over seven years professionally. And it takes a lot of time to build up the portfolio that you want and to get the attention of the people that you're interested in. 
So anyways, I hope that helps you and I hope you enjoyed uh, coming along with me on that photo shoot on the river. And if you have any questions about any of this kind of stuff and about the clients and about how I'm approaching shoots like this and whatever, leave those in the comments below and I'll definitely answer them because I love doing this stuff. I love helping you guys out and I love pushing the creative community. So anything you have, leave them in the comments below and I'll definitely answer them. If you like this stuff and you wanna see more, definitely make sure you subscribe to my channel. I've got new videos every Tuesday and Friday. And if you really found this video helpful, make sure you hit that like button. It definitely helps me out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.